thee we come, O Lord our God. let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice and now I ask that you please make an examination of your conscience for the next three nights besides offering your evening prayers I ask that you take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church and reread and meditate upon its message and now let us all recite the second act of confession I confess to Almighty God one in the Holy Trinity in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary all the saints and you my brothers and sisters that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O God, you will again renew us. And Show us your mercy, Lord. And Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thus says the Lord, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine, because you are precious in my eyes and glorious and because I love you. When I come to words, I thought that they became my joy and the happiness of my heart, because I bore your name, O Lord, and all the hosts. Glory be <coughs> to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have laid your hand on us and called us by name. Give us the grace to answer your call and proclaim to all people the good news of Jesus Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Vincent, will you please proclaim the word? Please be seated. Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I didn't call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not yet revealed anything to him. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to do without effect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. You are my intimate friend, and also you have found favor with me. Then call me, and I will respond. But let me speak first, and I shall answer. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. To do your will, O God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. John was standing.
standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Christus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The liturgical, <clears throat> the liturgical calendar of our church acts as a catechetical tool by which we come to know the Lord. And we come to know the Lord, the Word of God made flesh, by hearing His Word as found in the four Gospels. The organizer of our church, the late Prime Bishop Francis Hoder, elevated the Word of God, Slovo Bozhe, as a sacrament in the early years of our church. Now we define in our catechism that a sacrament is an outward and visible sign of God's inward and spiritual grace instituted by Jesus Christ for our salvation. The Word of God as a sacrament in our church, which is heard and preached, imparts its own individual sacramental grace as well as a sanctifying grace that helps one to become righteous or in other words to be in right standing with God. From the season of Advent we read of the history and the expectation and the hope of a Messiah as heard through the speakings of the prophets of God. From the season of Christmas, we read of the events surrounding the birth of the Messiah. Now that we are in the season of Epiphany, 
We change from white vestments to green, which is a sign of hope. And the story of Jesus continues to unfold with his baptism. Today we hear of the calling of his first chosen, the apostles. In the Gospel of Luke, we read of ascending forth of the disciples by Jesus. We read that he gives power over all demons as well as the power to cure diseases. But most importantly, he sends them out to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. We further read in Luke that they departed. They went through the villages bringing the good news of the kingdom as well as curing diseases. Luke tells us in chapter 9 verse 10 that Jesus' disciples returned and told Jesus everything they had done. Not only did Jesus give unto them the wisdom of the good news to proclaim, but he also gave them power to heal, which made his teaching viable and real. In the next couple of weeks, we will be talking of discipleship. It is something that throughout the centuries was shared. Discipleship is defined as one who embraces and assists in spreading the teachings of another as an active adherence of a movement or philosophy. You know, the message of, of Jesus has not changed. It is relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. And the sending forth with the mission of proclaiming the good news has not changed. As members of the holy name of Jesus, Polish National Catholic Church, we as the disciples of the Lord are all called upon to know the Lord for which we have been called and to share our discipleship unto the Lord with others. You know, I admire the missionary zeal of the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons who as disciples of their faith answer the call to go forth and preach the good news. Personally speaking, I am so fortunate to serve not only as a core member of the mission, National Mission and Evangelism Commission of the PNCC, but also to serve as the chaplain of the Eastern Diocesan Mission and Evangelism Commission. You know, there is a lot that has been accomplished and that there is still more to be done. It is an ongoing process. Its aim is to bring others to Christ. This past Thursday, Deacon Justin Daviot gave the first session of the series, Know Your Faith and Grow in Christ. Throughout the year, on every second Thursday of the month, there will be other presentations given by other presenters who will help to define our faith. These sessions are shared via Zoom and last for only an hour. Sadly, of all the invitations sent to the general church, there are only about 20 people who take the time 
to grow in Christ by knowing their faith. As we hear today the calling of the first disciples of Jesus, the question is asked of each of us. Do you consider yourself as a disciple of the Lord? Do you strive to embrace and do you assist in spreading in the teachings of Jesus? Are you an active adherent of the Christian faith? Why did Jesus call disciples? The simple fact is that he, even as the Word made flesh, he needed help to spread the message. As in the business world, there are salespeople who are trained to promote their company's product and to attract others who will buy their products. The goals of the Christian faith is not much more different. Instead of salespeople, there are disciples. And instead of being trained to promote their company product, our training is to better understand the good news of our own faith. Do you, if you were called upon right now, could you promote your Christian faith to others? Have you? Look at the churches, not only our church, but churches, not only our denomination, that as churches age, we find that there are less and less young people who are becoming involved. You know, <clears throat> The goal in the business world is to attract others to buy their products and thus to grow and expand. In all the chaos and confusion of our world, is there any better message that we can share? How do we, being equipped with the good news of Jesus, attract others unto our faith? We read of the calling of two of the first disciples. We say in today's reading, they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and you will see. In this church we believe that he is present. In our faith we believe he is present. And he says to each of us, come and you will see. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many resolutions that are made in the new year. I pray that we all may make a new year's resolution to strive through our own thoughts, words, and deeds to learn more of our own spiritual maturity and the message, the good news of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. If my people, upon whom my name has been pronounced, humble themselves and pray, and seek my presence, and turn their evil ways from their evil ways, I will hear them from heaven and pardon their sins and revive their land. of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, Lord our God, accept these gifts and let them be the tokens of our love and loyalty. Through them may our ministry be made holy in your sight, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful. 
merciful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. We praise you with greater joy than over the epiphany season which we celebrate the revelation of your Son, Jesus Christ, a light for all the nations that you have made. In him, therefore, we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift up our voices in one a harmony, giving you grace and blessing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these offerings, and these holy sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Let us pray this day for the blessings upon those who are sick, suffering, and dying, for the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray this day for peace throughout our world. May we pray for all those doctors and nurses and first responders who strive daily to help others. In our deepest prayers, may we remember all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, as well as all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, that God would bless them and return them safely to their families. And Father, we also pray for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you.
In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of eternal salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, to light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, meriting eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul's also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace
peace of the Lord be always with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not be able to receive the Eucharist sacramentally, may we offer this act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, receive the body and the blood of Christ. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believed in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 